Good afternoon, everyone. Dr. Bill here. Welcome back to my channel on this somewhat uh, wintry day in the last week of March. So, we're starting to get into April. People are starting to gear up for their rim-to-rim -rim hikes. And I wanted to do a short video of uh, four things not to do on a rim-to-rim -rim hike. Let me start with number one. Most of you who are going to do this hike will be starting in darkness. Uh, both times I did my rim-to-rim -rim hike, I did my first one at the age of 71. I did my second one at the age of 72. Uh, the first hike I started at 4 in the morning and the second hike I started at 3 in the morning. And I want to prepare you, you are going to be treated to the most extraordinary night sky that you may have ever seen in your life. Which brings me to issue number one. Do not hike and look at the sky at the same time. You'll be very tempted to do that. You'll be so excited because you've just started on the hike. You'll want to make time. But believe me, the trail is irregular. It's slippery in spots. It's possible to go off the side of the trail. So stop. Stop and take the time to look up at the sky while you're stationary. Don't risk snapping an ankle. Don't risk uh, ripping up your knee. Don't risk going off the trail. Stop and look up at the sky. That is issue number one. And again, the sky that you're going to see, particularly if you're from an area with high urban levels of pollution, the sky that you're going to see is going to take your breath, so breath away. Um, I mean, there are going to be so many stars out, even constellations that you're familiar with will be difficult to pick out because there will be such a carpet of, scar of stars behind you. Issue number two, don't wear your clunky, heavy hiking boots. You don't need them. Wear the lightest hiking shoe, trail shoe that you can wear, that you can wear comfortable over distance. It's unnecessary to wear um, those heavy clunky boots. A lot of the trail is going to be in sand. Not a lot of the trail, or sand or soil, not a lot of the trail is going to be on hard rock. Uh, Test your shoes out, make sure you can walk distances in them, and wear the lightest ones that you can wear. Number three, and, and you'll hear people giving you this advice to the contrary, but, but heed what I'm saying. Number three, do not walk in a stream and get your shoes and socks wet. Some people recommend you do that. Don't do that. Unless you're planning to leave your leave your shoes and socks out in the sun and dry thoroughly. If you start hiking in wet socks and wet shoes, you run the risk of significant blistering on your feet. So don't do it. If you want to get the rest of your clothes soaking wet, and I did that, I soaked my shirt and I soaked my hat and I soaked my pants, but do not soak your shoes. And here is my fourth point. Do not leave on your hike before you check and find out what water sources are available before you leave. Stop in the day before and talk to the backcountry ranger. It's very common to have water sources not be on or be interrupted throughout the summer. And there's also reportedly going to be some construction on the trail this year that may very well affect your water sources. So number one, do not leave without knowing which ones are turned on. And as an ancillary to that point, Make sure that you know the distances between water sources. So, for example, as far as water sources out of a, out of a, uh, like a fountain or a spigot, once you leave um, Phantom Ranch going up the north rim, you're going to go almost seven miles to Cottonwood Campground before you get to another water source. And if you're coming down the South Kaibab Trail, by the time you leave the trailhead until you get to Phantom Ranch, again, another seven mile distance, there's no water there. No water out of a faucet. Now, if you're bringing a, a drinking straw with you, of course, as you're walking from Phantom Ranch up to, uh, up to Cottonwood, most of that distance will be right next to Bright Angel Creek, so you can purify some water. And uh, if you're hiking down from the uh, Bright Angel Trail, uh, you'll pass some water sources in the on the stream that uh, uh, that are part of uh, Havasupai Creek, uh, again, that you can purify. 
But again, as, as strongly as I can urge you, make sure that you check and find out which water sources are turned on. Well, I hope you like these four points. And um, please leave any comments below if you have any others that you would add to it. And I will see you on the trail.